my brother nathan valley how are you <laughs> my man i am i'm great today we're going to be going over how to analyze a real estate market now look i look up questions the top asked questions that real estate investors wholesalers that are getting in the business want to know and then we show you we talk about the answer our opinion and we show you how to do it brought to you by bachelors we're going to show you exactly how to analyze a real estate market i'm going to show you today so if you're wondering why the heck should i listen to these guys well if you're asking yourself am i in the right real estate market we're going to break that down but before we get into that, let's introduce ourselves. First, I'm going to let Nathan Valley go. Go first, Nathan. Tell us tell us why anyone should listen to what you have to say. They shouldn't. No, I'm kidding. Guys, uh, my name's Nathan Valley. I've been in wholesaling for about five years. Done a bunch of deals, a bunch of different states. Um, some of the things I've known for was locking up over 100 contracts in a single year. Um, some of you might have seen a 30-day challenge I did a while ago to where I picked a totally brand new market to where I had no contacts, no resources, nothing, and did a $20,000 deal in 30 days and only spent about two, two to three hours Monday through Friday working on it. So that was pretty cool. Bro, that's absolutely insane. And we're going to be and, talking. And I didn't spend any money on marketing. Yeah, it was, it was wild. That is insane. Not a lot of people can say they know how to do that or have done that. Okay. And and for me, my name is Nathan Payne. I've been in the business for over six years now. And I started uh, knocking doors, started working really hard, not knowing what to do. And, uh, you know, I've done over 100 deals now. I've done millions of dollars in transactions. But the reason why we do stuff like this is because we've been in your place. We know where you've been. We know the pain and the agony that people feel by just trying to figure out everything themselves. You don't have to learn everything yourselves. You can learn through vicariously through us, right? Through others. So that's why we're here. We're going to be breaking down again, how to analyze a real estate market. So Nathan, tell, before we get into how to do it, tell us how important it is and how you got rocked in the beginning of your journey. Cause you picked the long market. Man, make, make me bring up that rough past, huh? That's right. So guys, yeah. market, market is something Again, I, I can't understate this because you could do everything else right and you can do it perfectly, but you ain't going to make money if you're not in the right market. With wholesaling specifically, guys, one of the one of the biggest lies ever told is, oh, if you find a good enough deal, the money or the buyer will find you. Not true, right? Nothing in life works that way. For us as wholesalers, we I don't care how good of a deal you have under contract. We only get paid when we also have a buyer that is ready, able, and willing to pay us for that contract. So again, the buyer, the cash buyer, the investor, that is the person that's truly paying us. So that is our ideal client. So that's where we need to start. So again, when picking a market, the number one question we need to ask, am I in a market to where my ideal client, people that are going to be paying me, right? Investors, am I in a market that investors want to be in? And the number one way we measure that is investor activity. That's right. right? Am I in a market to where there's a lot of investors fighting for deals? Now that's, that's important. That's important, right? But it's also important to know that there's enough leads or enough people to go after to produce deals for those investors too, right? So we're going to be going over that. I'm going to show you in batch how to do t both check investor activity and how you can determine, okay, there are enough leads for me to go after who should I target? And I'm going to give you guys my opinion. So Nate did an amazing job of explaining why you need to be in the right market. Now we're going to show you how to analyze Nate, before I go into showing people exactly with my screen, you have anything else you want to add? Man, I was just going to say, guys, um, in the in the kind of first half of my wholesaling journey, I was operating out of West Michigan and we had a company to where we we're doing a lot of deals, but not a lot of investor activity going on in West Michigan. And that was the hardest thing. I was getting these deals locked up and under contract that were smoking deals on paper. Right. In every which way you look at it. But the problem is, is they're just wasn't a starving crowd. There wasn't a lot of people that were hungry for those deals. And so didn't matter how good of a deal I had under contract. If nobody's really interested in buying it, you don't, you don't make a lot of money or you don't, you know, close a lot of those deals. So, so how do you make sure you're not wasting your time? How do you analyze a real estate market? Let's dive right in. First of all, get batch leads. If you don't have batch leads, DM me, message me on YouTube. There, I have a, a link that gives you a seven day free trial where you can try it out and see if you like it. Pretty easy, okay? So the first thing you wanna do, check investor activity. So how the heck do you check investor activity? So I'm just over in Sandy, Utah right now. I'm moving to Canada, but, uh, and, uh, but I'm going to invest here in the United States. 
while I'm there. So let's just, I'll show you super quick. You just go under property search. You take your little boundary and you say, look, you know what? I really want to invest in Salt Lake City. I want to spend my time here. Is that the right move? All you got to do to see the activity of cash buyers is you just got to go over here to the quick filters over here and you go to cash buyers. So I think I might've passed it. Let me see. No, right here, cash buyers. So this is saying, dang, you got 35,000. This is good, but that's not all we're looking at. We're looking at on market. I want to know how many flips are currently on the market that a cash buyer bought and has relisted with a real estate agent after flipping it. And as you can see, guys, there's a lot going on here, right? There's a lot of opportunities, 1,897. You know, honestly, that uh, sounds a little ridiculous, but that might, that, that's a lot. That's a lot, bro. That sounds a little crazy to me. I guess that's that's what the data is saying, bro. <laughs> Sometimes, and, and, you know, with, um, and, you know, it's just kind of the world we live in with algorithms and whatnot. It's not always perfect, but it's enough to where you can get a good enough idea. You know, That's again, right. if I'm looking in an area, because some of those might pop up as flips, but it might just be because somebody bought the home and it's appreciated a si significant amount. I'm you know, sorry, dude. Not... I, I clicked on the wrong button. <laughs> Look, I'm a straight noob, dude. 511. That's that's way more that's way more accurate. So you click on that's when I clicked on market and you saw that that's how many on market properties are for sale. <laughs> but out of the on market in this area, 511 have been done by cash buyers, okay? And you can go over here and you can see the flips and what they look like. And you can tell that all these things are either nice or they've been flipped, but we're not going to go too in depth on like the pictures. So you can just see like over here, if we continue on this one, you can see uh, that it's been rehabbed or so, uh, an investor bought it and he's trying to resell it. doesn't look like it's been rehabbed, but it might, might've been an investor that bought it, cleaned it up and is trying to resell it. Okay. So that's one way to do it. So let's look at this. Like if you're a lot of people are like, well, what, what if I want to work in my backyard? Let's say you live in Eden. Okay. <laughs> let's not do Eden. That sounds, you can already tell that's not, not going to get it done. So let's go rock Springs. So you're in rock Springs and you're like, you know, is there enough investor activity here for me to just work in my own backyard? So you, you mark it and you go to cash buyers and you go on market and you got 12 right now. Is that that much? Not really. I would say that's not going to be enough activity. You know, you could call on some of these and talk to some of the investors, but I would say, no, that's not going to be enough. I would say you need at least a hundred, a hundred, uh, cash buyers that um, you can work with in a market. Nate, yeah, you have something I, you want to say? Yeah. And and guys, to kind of further the point, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Dan Kennedy, and he's known as like the godfather of direct response marketing. And he was giving a presentation on stage one time and he asked the crowd, if you could open up a hot dog stand and have any competitive advantage, what would it be? And people start yelling out answers. Oh, I'd want the, the best recipe for hot dogs. I'd want the nicest hot dog stand. I'd want the best location. He goes, you're all wrong. He said the only competitive advantage that you need and the only one that matters is having a starving crowd. So same thing. And again, guys, you don't need to be in the biggest, the hottest market. But the most important thing when choosing a market is you just want to make sure you're not in a bad one. And again, right. you know, 10, 12 buyers. Yeah, that's that is a bad market. And guys, just to further point even more, you guys are watching us on, on YouTube or something like that, probably. Right. So you've probably seen some other investors and whatnot. Guys, have you ever wondered why they're all in the same four or five markets? You guys know where they are. Where are they? They're in Phoenix, Arizona, Dallas, Texas, Florida, Atlanta, right? So, and again, you don't need to be in one of those markets. But again, if, if you're going to scale a really big operation, you got to be in a market to where there is enough investor activity and there's enough investors to where there's enough demand for what you're going to be supplying and bring to the table. Again, guys, does not mean you need to be in the biggest and hottest markets, but it is crucial to make sure that you're not in a bad market. That's it. And Nate, I'm actually a little surprised that there's a lot. Of, uh, it seems like there's um, some quite a bit of flip, not quite a bit, but there's some flips going on in this area, which is interesting because I, well, I, I wouldn't. Some, I wouldn't. Some of those. Money might be you know to where it just it's a home that somebody bought and maybe they lived in it for like a year or two and it just had really good appreciation this but one looks like it, it got flipped though this 
It looks yeah. uh, like they did a, some of somewhat of a flip. But anyway, no, I understand. Sometimes it's going to collect properties that aren't technically flips just because they've been resold. But basically what this is saying is, hey, someone bought it with cash and they're trying to relist it within within a year's time. I think that's the, the time frame. And if you're like, hey, look, I want to be more specific, you can go to all filters and you can filter it for ownership info and like cash buyers, like how long they owned it, how long did you can do, get, get more in depth. I just I'm just showing you guys quickly. So let me show you. Now that we we say, okay, let me see if there's investor activity. The next thing I want to do is if you're going to be doing off market and targeting investors, you want to make, sorry, targeting sellers, you want to make sure that you are targeting a place that has enough lead info, right? Whether uh, you're going to pull a list. I like to go for pre-foreclosures. So according to this, let's see how many pre -for Okay, so there's no pre-foreclosure data that Batch has. Maybe there might be some, maybe, but that's not a, you're not going to be able to build a sustainable business off of pre-foreclosures, off of tired landlords or absentee owners. I mean, that's 24. That's not going to get the work. So again, let's go back to Salt Lake. Let's see how many pre-foreclosures are in Salt Lake City so we can kind of see what we're looking at here. So I'll take my little nifty tool. You can also type in this, the area, but let's just go here. Boom. Let's see what, what we got in pre-foreclosures. 354. Okay, so that's, that's enough for you monthly. Now it's not 354 every month. It just depends on the month, but that's enough for you to target get and call one by one. And that's what I say. Just get a hold of all of them. Okay. Don't get too crazy. Don't throw 354 in auto dialer and just auto dial, dial them for like every hour on the hour. Right. You, you gotta be more like a sniper. You gotta be like a detective and find out who owns those properties and talk to them. Now there's, there's more than enough data on absentee owners, but I don't tell people that are new just to pull absentee owner lists and tired landlord lists. That's expensive. And you're going to pull a lot of leads in. You're going to have to just sift through a lot of stuff. I go for the highest level, like lower lower amount of leads and the highest amount of um, motivation, right? According to the list. So we go here, there's enough. There's enough activity. If you go pretty much anywhere you, you that doesn't have a high population, you're probably not going to have enough data for you for it to make sense for you. So that's the two things I wanted to show you guys when analyzing a real estate market investor activity. And are there enough pre-foreclosure leads? Are there enough tax liens, probates to keep you busy? And if not, then... Uh, then you're getting in trouble because you're like, well, let me work two or three markets. Then you're dealing with issues of like, okay, you don't know the markets. You don't know. It could be completely different, the comps in one area versus another city. That's just how real estate markets are. So my advice to you, check, go to Batch Leads, check, see the investor activity, see how many pre-foreclosure probate leads you're getting, tax liens, those higher mo higher motivated lists. If there's enough work for you to work, go, go to town. And if not, re rethink about where you're working. Nate, you have anything you want to say to that? Yeah, the one last thing I'll say is, guys, if you're in a market, so long as there's investor activity, again, that's the most important thing. When you're looking to pull lists, it's okay if it's not the biggest list. You know, you might see something somewhere and you're like, oh, but Nate, like this person said that I need to have a minimum of like 5,000 records or 10,000 or what. If you're just getting started and you're like, Nate, I'm I'm just trying to to get to like my first deal done or one deal a month, you don't need these the, the massive massive lists you can do so much with if you've got a small but a really really good quality niche list something again something like a pre foreclosure list do the unscalable thing spend a disproportionate amount of time with the highest quality of leads and that is your competitive advantage as somebody that's brand new you can do things that these bigger companies can't do Mm -hmm. So you can do things that they can't compete with. I can call a single seller twice in a row, leave a voicemail, send a text message from my iPhone, and then write a handwritten letter, put a minty piece of, uh, um, of candy in it, right? So it's a piece of lumpy mail. Nice. And with like a picture of me and my family. I can do that. A with your address, company, probably so they can not. come and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's so many ways you can get creative with it, but do the unscalable thing and focus on quality over quantity. Definitely work hard. Don't get me wrong. Right? Yeah, this is an excuse sure. to call like one lead a day, guys. But what I'm saying is focus on quality over quantity and one you'll be able to save yourself a lot of money but two you'll be able to be a lot more effective and you'll see you'll get a lot further when you focus I, on quality over quantity i love what you're saying dude you're singing my you're singing a song that rings true here i feel it so uh i love it and last thing we'll say before we dip out guys look if you feel overwhelmed and you're trying to figure out everything by yourself, or even if you've joined others, uh, maybe education programs and you're like, man, I still don't get this is I'm maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe I'm not good at real estate or I'm not a good entrepreneur. It's not your fault guys. The system of learning out there has 
I me and Nathan have talked about it many times. We believe it's flawed. Just to get information like we're giving you right now doesn't mean you feel more confident about going and getting a list. Maybe some people does, but what we do at Painless Flipping is we help you through every step of the way. So go check it out if you're interested in getting your hand held and learning how to get into this. We got your back. But for those of you that don't want your hand held, just keep watching this stuff. We, we go live every week and we show you what to do. But if you want, again, your hand held, I'll hold it for you. I'll hold it. Nathan will hold it. Nathan, do you have anything you want to say before we wrap up? No, man, I think that's about it. Yeah, guys, um, go to painlessflipping.com, you know, learn a little bit more about what we're doing. If you've got a lead and you're like, hey, I could use some help on knowing what to do next, book a call. We'll do a kind of a full lead breakdown for you. We'll tell you everything you need to do to take it from just a lead to a closed deal. All right. Well, if you got that, if you like that question that we answered and you have another one you want us to answer, just submit it in the comments, like hit the bell icon, subscribe. We'll look at these and, you know, maybe we'll answer your question on the next call. Later, everybody. Later, guys. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's Nathan Payne. And for the first time ever, we just released this insane training bundle that has literally everything that I've learned from doing a combined 4,000 deals in real estate, all from starting with absolutely no previous business background experience or any real estate experience. Plus, there's over $19,000 worth of free gifts that we're throwing in all for an insanely low, low price. If you want to get your hands on this, be sure to click the first link on the description below right now.